This segment of JTV News is brought to you by Clarence Thomas Limited, Infinite Solutions, and Caribbean Sellers. The U.S. government is imposing limits on the number of fish that commercial and recreational fishermen can catch in the waters off Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. The new fishing limits, which went into effect on January 30th, angered fishermen who say the restrictions on species including the highly prized spiny lobster and queen conch will endanger their livelihood. Federal authorities concede the industry in the territories could lose more than $1 million a year, but creating a healthy reef ecosystem is a priority, according to Roy Crabtree, one of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration members. According to the Associated Press, previous restrictions haven't protected dwindling populations of dozens of species. U.S. Coast Guard is expected to enforce the annual catch limits with help from local authorities. Both commercial and recreational fishermen are supposed to report their catches, but some fishermen say enforcement will be hard as the USVI has a much smaller expanse of its own territorial waters. The new limit will hit the US Virgin Islands the hardest, especially St. Croix, with small businesses there expected to lose up to $1.2 million a year. This measure comes as St. Croix braces for the closing of the Hovensa oil refinery. The leaders of the ABBA bloc have pledged deeper economic ties on Sunday as they invited new members into the fold. Meeting in Caracas over the weekend, the eight-member group pushed plans to launch its own regional bank and expand the use of the virtual currency, the Sucre, to promote dollar-free trade between the nations. Founded in 2004 by Venezuela and Cuba, the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of Our Americas, or ALBA TCP, has positioned itself as a bulwark against the U.S. influence in the region. Venezuela President Hugo Chavez urged Latin American countries to promote regional development banks as alternatives to the World Bank and International Monetary Fund. Last year, Alba Nations was central to the creation of the Community of Latin American and Caribbean States, which includes every country in the hemisphere except the United States and Canada. Leaders of Suriname and St. Lucia said they would seek formal inclusion into the bloc, which includes Venezuela, Cuba, Ecuador, Bolivia, Nicaragua, Dominica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Antigua and Barbuda. The presidents also ratified Haiti's role as a permanent observer and asked member nations to redouble their efforts to help that nation recover from the 2010 earthquake. Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez and Haitian President Michael Martelly signed a framework agreement that aims to boost Venezuela's role in Haitian agriculture, manufacturing and tourism, among other sectors. Members of the Legislative Assembly of the Falkland Islands are lobbying St. Lucia's support in the escalating dispute with Argentina. The South American country, which fought a war with the UK for the archipelago in the South Atlantic Ocean, is adamant that the island is a part of its territory. Amid the fast-moving developments, the Falklands are still seeking to deepen ties with St. Lucia, which has backed its cause for self-rule. Two representatives of the elected governing body of the Falkland Islands held discussions with Prime Minister Dr. Kenny Antony on St. Lucia's continued support for the island's right to self-determination. Tensions between Argentine and the British Overseas Territory are high, with the 30th anniversary of the Argentine invasion of the Falklands sparked war with Margaret Thatcher's UK in 1982. Despite losing the conflict, Argentina still claims the island as its territory, but members of the Falklands Legislative Assembly assert the island has the democratic right to decide its future. We're really keen to continue to get people to support us in that right to determine our own future. I see no reason why we shouldn't be able to do that. St. Lucia has supported the Falklands' right to self-determination since 1985. However, that support is under scrutiny after St. Lucia, a member of the British Commonwealth, was offered special membership in the Bolivarian Alliance for Our Peoples of the Americas, ALBA, at the grouping's recent summit in Venezuela on the weekend. Three Commonwealth Caribbean countries, which are members of ALBA, support Argentina's claims to the archipelago. Antigua Barbuda, Dominica and St. Vincent and the Grenadines have agreed to block any ships flying the Falkland Islands flag from docking in their ports. But Prime Minister Dr. Kenny Ann who attended the ALBA summit explained St. Lucia is not part of ALBA as yet due to technical issues and also understands the nuances of geopolitical implications and its national interest. However, we are on record as expressing interest in joining petro -Caribbean. You recall that prior to the general elections of 2006, the then cabinet of ministers had okayed St. Lucia's membership of petro -Caribbean. Of course, that was not possible because the general elections intervened. I am hoping very soon, however, 
that we will engage the officials of Petro Caribbean in discussions to determine the issue of membership. Falklands legislator Roger Edwards adds St. Lucia and the Falklands share much in common as former British colonies. Although the United Kingdom is still responsible for the defense and foreign affairs of the self-governing British overseas territory. We've been very fortunate in having St. Lucia always support that right of self-determination in the United Nations and we're very grateful to them so we're here to say thank you. The economic bloc comprising three Caribbean community nations and five Latin American countries also plans to admit Haiti as a full member. The grouping is also working on creating a single economic space called Eco Alba. Winston Springer Jr., HGS News, Channel 4. Help may be on the horizon for St. Lucia's banana industry after its status reached crisis proportions following an attack by the leaf spot disease, the Black Sigatoga. Already trying to recover from an attack of the yellow cigatoka, the country's banana industry was already in trouble with plants damaged by the disease producing up to 50% lower yield of fruit. Agriculture Minister Moses Jean-Baptiste referred to the black cigatoga disease as a national crisis and warned that the country's food security was under threat. However, international agencies, including the French and Taiwanese embassies based in St. Lucia, have all expressed an interest and desire to give a helping hand to remedy the situation. A specialist from the French Research Centre has suggested that the country look at planting a banana species that will resist the black cicatoga and the Taiwanese embassy expressed a willingness to become involved. They presented an option to cut off the affected banana trees and start fresh while planting cash crops such as cabbage, watermelon and tomato that can all be harvested between one or three months. Agriculture Minister Moses Jean-Baptiste is also discussing the disease with officials in Costa Rica, which has had success in combating black cigatoga. The Caribbean has forfeited significant potential revenue from certain artists such as Barbados's Rihanna, according to Adrian Augier, co-chair of the CARICOM Regional Task Force on Cultural Industries. He noted that Rihanna was not registered with the Barbados Copyright Society of Composers, Authors and Publishers, and neither Sean Paul nor Beanie Man were registered with the Jamaican equivalent. All were registered with the US-based American Society of Composers, Authors and Publishers, or the UK's BMI. He said Rihanna is a billion dollar business with thousands of people earning from her talent, from accounting and legal professionals to artist management. Accordingly, the region needs to develop the infrastructure, particularly in the realm of intellectual property legislation, to support its major artists and to invest in them by creating the necessary institutions, incentives and educational environments. This is Walter Barrett for JTV News.